Zika virus is a cause of microcephaly and other severe fetal brain abnormalities. All infants born to mothers with laboratory evidence of confirmed or possible Zika virus infection during pregnancy should receive a comprehensive physical exam, including measurement of head circumference, length and weight, and assessment of gestational age, a neurologic examination, a head ultrasound to assess the brain structure, a standard newborn hearing screen, and testing for Zika virus infection before hospital discharge. This video will show clinicians how to measure an infant's head and length. Microcephaly is a birth defect in which an infant's head is smaller than expected when compared with infants of the same sex and age or the same gestational age. Microcephaly is typically defined as an occipital frontal circumference or head circumference below the third percentile for gestational age and sex. However, standards can vary. Microcephaly is a clinical finding, not a diagnosis. Head circumference is considered a reliable assessment of the volume of the underlying brain. To assess an infant for microcephaly, a clinician measures the newborn's head circumference. It is important that healthcare providers measure head circumference in the same way consistently to accurately identify if an infant has microcephaly. This is especially important in the midst of the Zika outbreak because correctly identifying infants who may have Zika-associated microcephaly can help health authorities connect them to the services they need. Measuring head circumference isn't always as simple as it sounds. Let's review important considerations and methods now. First, start with a measuring tape that cannot be stretched. Next, securely wrap the tape around the widest possible circumference of the head. That's usually one to two finger widths above the eyebrow on the forehead, and then across the most prominent part of the back of the head, as you can see here. We recommend that you reposition the tape and repeat the measurements three times. Record the largest measurement to the nearest 0.1 centimeters. Measuring length ideally should be completed by two healthcare providers. To measure length, lay the infant face up on an infantometer. The first healthcare provider correctly positions the newborn's head against the head plate and gently holds the head in this position. The second healthcare provider gently presses the infant's knees to straighten the legs. Then he or she should press the bottom of the foot onto the foot plate so that there is no gap between the foot and the foot plate. Record the length of the infant by reading the measurement on the infantometer. If an infantometer is not available, a non-stretchable measuring tape can be used. Positioning the infant's head against a wall or other vertical flat surface is the best way to mark the head position. The infant's legs are then extended as before. The heel position is marked, and the distance from the wall to the infant's heel is measured with the tape. The presence of molding, cephalohematoma, or other factors related to delivery can affect the accuracy of head circumference measurements. The time required for these factors to resolve can vary. Head circumference measurements taken after the first 24 hours of life may be more indicative of the true head size. However, most measures of head circumference at birth from reference charts by age and sex are based on measurements taken no later than 24 hours after birth. The most important factor is that the head circumference is carefully measured and documented at some point during the first week of life. Head circumference is one of three important growth parameters to measure at birth. The diagnosis of microcephaly refers only to the head circumference. Therefore, it is essential to measure the other growth parameters, birth weight and birth length, to assess the infant's overall growth pattern. 
Although the finding of a proportionately small size in all three growth parameters is of concern and should be investigated in the context of possible congenital Zika virus infection, there are many possible etiologies that could also cause the same growth pattern. The occurrence of a head circumference that is disproportionately small compared to the other measurements is more indicative of a specific problem with brain development. Infants with abnormalities consistent with congenital Zika syndrome should also receive follow-up care according to CDC's latest guidance, which is updated as new information becomes available. The latest guidance can be found on CDC's Zika website. Our top priority for the Zika response is protecting pregnant women. We also are working to ensure that infants with microcephaly and other brain abnormalities receive the services they need. Accurately identifying infants with microcephaly is crucial. We hope that this instructional video has provided you with the tools you need to accurately measure head circumference and infant length. For more information about Zika, including clinical guidance and tools for healthcare providers, please visit CDC's website at cdc.gov/zika.